Today we're going to be taking a look at two mid-range air coolers that won't break the bank and should provide you good cooling performance. One of them is from a brand that you're probably quite familiar with and the other is a little lesser known. They come in at about the same price, about the same size and about the same cooling capacity. So which one of these should you buy? Let's check them out. Let's talk about the lesser known product on this table first. This is the Scythe Fuma 2. Scythe as a company has actually been around for a long time, focusing on PC cooling solutions and fans for the most part, and being much bigger in Asian markets than here in the United States. I've actually used their products before in one of the first big builds on the channel. My deep red system from 2016 had three Scythe Slipstream fans in it, and at the time they were the only manufacturer that I could find that made fans that were 12 millimeters thick. They actually have a wide range of CPU coolers available, but the Fuma 2 has been picking up steam recently among PC enthusiasts as an interesting value proposition. It's relatively inexpensive at around $60 US and has a really heavy industrial construction with six copper heat pipes running through the nickel plated base plate and up through the dual radiator towers. Scythe ships two fans with the Fuma 2, one regular 120 millimeter for the middle of the stack and one slim version for the outside. This allows for excellent memory clearance as with the help of the offset cold plate, the fan shouldn't overhang your dim slots at all meaning that you can go as tall as you want. On the other side, the fins are removed to allow for 58 millimeters of space to clear either VRM cooling solutions, IO covers, or another bank of memory if you're going with Intel HEDT, which this does support. Overall height is also fairly manageable at 155 millimeters, meaning that it should fit in most cases. The Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 was introduced at CES this year and slots into their product stack right below the venerable Dark Rock series. While the Dark Rock 4 and Pro 4 are among the best air coolers on the market, they're also quite expensive. The Shadow Rock, by comparison, is only about $50 US. And while it lacks all the black finish and multiple fan setups of its big brothers, it does look to be a worthy competitor in the mid-range and should serve as a good foil for the Fuma 2. The Shadow Rock 3 uses a single tower instead of a dual tower setup, meaning that you only get one fan instead of two. The fin stack is also less dense and the cold plate uses five direct contact heat pipes with no plating as opposed to six pipes with nickel plating. There is a significant offset in the tower design to help with memory clearance, but the distance to the bottom fin is only 40 millimeters, so keep that in mind if you're mounting this to a socket with memory on both sides. The top of the tower is adorned with a nice brushed aluminum plate, and you can see the mounting hole here that is made to work perfectly with the included, now world famous, Be Quiet screwdriver. Overall height of the cooler is 163 millimeters, which doesn't sound like much more than the 155 of the Fuma, but when it comes to PC building, often the magic number for small or smaller or medium towers is 160 millimeters of CPU cooler clearance. So just consult your case's manual before making a purchase like either of these. Let's talk about direct comparisons here. Is a dual tower setup better than a single tower design? Well, in theory, and if nothing else, the dual tower setup allows for multiple fans to be installed, increasing airflow over the fins and dissipating more heat. Yes, the fins themselves are smaller, but in this specific comparison, the stack on the Fuma 2 is more dense. And in fact, the Fuma does have more fin surface area. I did some quick and dirty math, and the Shadow Rack comes in at about 3783 square centimeters versus the Fuma 2 at 4744 square centimeters. Additionally, the Fuma does use one more heat pipe than the Shadow Rock. Neither of these guys features RGB, so if bling is your thing, you might wanna look elsewhere. Now, installing air coolers has never been the easiest part of PC building, and that does unfortunately continue here. The included screwdriver with the Fuma 2 kinda stinks. It has a nubby grip and isn't magnetic, but it does help, especially if you don't have a long neck screwdriver on hand already. Both the Shadow Rock and the Fuma require 
fumbling around with back plates, screws, clips, cross braces, and spacers in order to secure them down to the socket. So just be prepared. The Shadow Rock will have less flexibility than the Fuma when it comes to size and spacing, as it's both taller and has slightly more restrictive memory clearance on the opposite side. But how do they perform? This is obviously the biggest and most important question and the one that will likely drive most purchase decisions. I decided to do four separate test scenarios with each cooler, all at fixed fan speeds. They were tested at 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% fan speeds for both acoustic performance and thermals, both at idle and at load. My first inclination was to use my standard cooler torture test, which is a 9900K locked at five gigahertz and 1.3 volts, but this quickly proved to not be viable. My first round of testing looked like this, with the CPU quickly hitting 99C and throttling at every fan speed. Clearly this was just way too much heat load for a mid-range air cooler to handle, so I dialed it back significantly. My testing was done with a 9900K still, but it's locked at 4.5 gigahertz and 1.2 volts this time, and this was much more reasonable and provided some actual useful data. All tests were run until temperature saturation was reached, which was usually around 10 minutes. And the temperature readings were taken from the CPU package reporting in Hardware Info 64. First up, acoustics. Surprisingly, there wasn't much difference here, despite the Fuma running two fans instead of one. Both coolers are remarkably quiet up through about 50% fan speed, and even at 100%, they were still well under control. None of these fans would be considered high speed, with the Scythe fans capping out at only 1200 RPM and the Shadow Wings at 1600. Generally, you won't notice a difference between these two when they're inside of an enclosed case as my testing was done in an open air bench with sound metering from about 18 inches away. Next up was idle temperatures. We won't linger for long here as this wasn't really where a cooler is gonna be stressed and show its mer merit, but you can see that across the spectrum of fan speeds, the Fuma 2 did come out on top by maybe a degree or two, not really a big deal. But now let's talk about load temperatures. Performance deltas here again were consistent across the board, only these results were slightly more dramatic. The Fuma 2 beat out the Shadow Rock by three or four degrees, even keeping the 9900K at or below 60C for half of the results. The 75% fan speed result for the Fuma was even better than the 100% fan speed result for the Shadow Rock. Now keep in mind that I wouldn't recommend either of these coolers for a 9900K for a daily use system. Under fully stock settings, the 9900K can boost all eight cores to 4.7 gigahertz, and most people will probably wanna take advantage of the huge overclocking potential of these chips to run them around five gigahertz, and neither of these guys on the table here can handle that. The same can be said for the higher end AMD chips like 3900X and the 3950X, which are far more sensitive to temperature scaling and also have a lower TJ Maxx. But I think that either of these would work great on something like an i7-9700K or a Ryzen 7 3700X. The Fuma 2 I think is the clear winner here, although it does cost about $10 more. It is the better performer of the two, and if you're comparison shopping and had both of these in your cart, the choice should probably be pretty easy. However, there are certainly people who might not have that extra 10 bucks and are building a system where the thermal benefits just won't make much of a difference, like if you're targeting a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU instead of an eight core model. In that case, the Shadow Rock is still a great product and one that I would recommend. So what do you guys think of these two air coolers or air coolers in general? They seem to be making a comeback. Are you using one? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Check out the merchandise store at bpscustoms.com for hoodies like this. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.